Today on Investigate TV Plus, companies skirt the rules to erase negative online reviews. I'm T. Chappelle. And I'm Lee Zurich. Our ongoing investigation exposes their tricks and the efforts to crack down on these scammers. Plus, firefighters face a new challenge. Electric vehicle fires have become uh, really a pain for us. We explore why EV battery fires burn hotter and faster than a normal car and the actions firefighters are taking to gain the upper hand. And we revisit a wounded warrior who will now be able to do for his family what he so bravely did for his country, serve. To be in a place that provides equal balance in a house, this new home will provide me that area to really fill in this family. In-depth stories that inform and inspire. You're watching Investigate TV Plus. We've been warning you about fake reviews for products and services, and now the federal government is proposing a new rule to help you make better decisions. Consumer investigator Rachel DePompa finds out if these changes will make a difference, and she shows us how companies are skirting the current law and bribing you to write fake testimonials. Robbie Comia loves traveling in his family's old Honda Odyssey van. This is an 07. He usually takes it for trips to see his mom. Mostly in Virginia Beach. We don't drive it that often. We have two other cars that we're usually driving to work. The van usually just sits in the garage and the battery died. So Comia went on Amazon and bought a portable battery jump starter. I popped the hood up, I hooked everything up the, the way the instructions were. There was a charge on the, the jump starter and nothing happened. He tried it a couple of times and nothing. So he returned it and left a review. I leave positive and negative reviews on Amazon because we use it for, for so many things. He called his review worthless piece of, writing absolute trash, returned for refund. The company sent him an email apologizing for his experience and offering several solutions, including a $50 Amazon gift card, if he would consider, quote, helping us to delete the review. I mean, at first it, it just felt strange, but then the more I thought about it, I was like, this is kind of like a bribe <laughs> because you're asking me to, you know, not really lie about your product, but to withhold information that could have been helping somebody else. Robbie is not alone. Over the last year, we've uncovered the problems created by fake online reviews, which are illegal. We alerted tech giants to the social media groups dedicated to buying and selling phony reviews. Many of those groups pulled because of our investigation. And now, if you search fake reviews on Facebook, you get this warning message telling you that term is, quote, sometimes associated with fraudulent activity, which isn't allowed on Facebook. According to a study by internet marketing service Uberall, 90% of consumers use reviews before buying. 66% say fake reviews are a major problem. And take a look at this. A 2019 study by Uberall found even the slightest increase in a star rating can cause a 25% gain in customer engagement for a product. And there's a new way scammers are now trying to pad reviews for companies. People all across the country are getting surprise packages they didn't order from Amazon and other sellers. The Better Business Bureau calls this a brushing scam, and it means someone's gotten a hold of your address and they're sending the package to create a verified purchase. It's going to be a free something. You're going to open it, and yes, by law, you can keep that free gift. But what this is really doing is cheating the online review system. The scammers post a fake positive review to improve a product's rating, which means more sales. The Federal Trade Commission is asking the public to weigh in on its new rule, cracking down on inauthentic reviews. It would ban writing fake reviews, paying for reviews, concealing honest reviews and other deceptive practices. If the rule was implemented, uh, we would be able to seek civil penalties of up to $50,000 per violation of the rule. Which he says adds up quickly and would deliver hefty fines to those who break it. 
dozens of consumers already weighing in. One person writing, I see businesses that aren't even open yet, and somehow, magically, they have tons of five-star reviews on Google. Super suspect. Robbie Comia's Honda Odyssey is on the road again. That he ended up buying a different oh, jump starter, so and he ultimately ignored the email from the company offering a $50 Amazon gift card. And he never took down the review. Robbie says the experience didn't leave him with a good feeling. It's a way of like padding good reviews for your product, and then they're not real, and they're not you know, being sold honestly. Here's what you can do to see if a review looks real. The BBB has a scam tracker online where you can see if brushing scams are happening in your neighborhood. Also, look up a business to see if it's accredited. When reading reviews, be careful. If every single review of that product is five stars, think twice. And remember, experts tell us word of mouth is still the best recommendation. Amazon says in 2022, it blocked more than 200 million suspected fake reviews. In a statement, the company told us, we have zero tolerance for fake reviews and want Amazon customers to shop with confidence, knowing that the reviews they see are authentic and trustworthy. We reached out to the company asking to remove the review. We did not hear back. An ACL injury used to mean a long, painful recovery. He told me that it was a new surgery and that um, it would make me sh like stronger uh, after. Still to come, how a new surgical technique for ACL repair taps into the body's own healing power. But first, electric vehicle fires can be costly, dangerous, and hard to put out. Right now, we're all scrambling to come up with a better ways. We explore the new tools and technology helping fire responders battle these challenging fires. You can watch Investigate TV Plus anytime streaming online. Get the app for Roku, Amazon Fire TV, and Apple TV. They're free to download. Electric vehicles have several pluses, including reducing air pollution and eliminating fuel cost. But with the transition to electric vehicles comes a definite negative. Lithium ion batteries can be especially dangerous when they catch fire. And when they do occur, they can burn hotter and faster and require far more water to extinguish them. For example, in Nashville, Tennessee, a Nissan Leaf caught fire while charging in a parking lot. The fire department says it took nearly five hours and 45,000 gallons of water to extinguish. For a typical car fire, that number is around 500 to 1,000 gallons, and it's usually extinguished in minutes. The firefighters we spoke to say EV fires are their new hazmat because they have to employ different methods when battling EV fires. Reporter Susan Campbell shows us how departments are adapting and training for this next frontier in firefighting. When a Tesla crashed and burst into flames in Scottsdale, it reignited on the tow truck. And on a California highway, it took firefighters three hours and 6,000 gallons of water to stop this EV from burning. Electric vehicle fires have become uh, really a pain for us. And they're dangerous and costly. We're still figuring out ways to deal with them. Everything from, uh, you know, putting them in a dumpster, loading sand on top of them and and possibly even burying them to some cases. Right now, uh, you know, we're all scrambling to come up with a better ways. You said you're scrambling because there's not one standard tool yeah. to put out these fires, it sounds like. Yeah, there isn't. But there are some new tools that could help. Here's one of them. It's called the turtle. For this demonstration, this isn't an electric vehicle. Firefighters say it would be too dangerous to purposely set one on fire. The problem with electric vehicles is trying to cool the battery pack. Manufacturers recommend doing that with lots of water, but those batteries are hard to get to. So the turtle slides right under the car and sprays water straight up. We flow over 500 gallons a minute at 150 PSI. Firefighters are also testing out thermal blankets big enough to cover entire vehicles. When you look at the blanket, you think, oh, it put the fire out. It, it actually can't. It's impossible to stop a lithium ion battery fire. So the blanket, it does a great job of, of isolating and, ex and limiting exposures. 
On your side surveyed several fire departments around the state. The city of Goodyear told us they have blankets that are similar to this on two battalion trucks. Really taking time for science to catch up and try to find ways to safely extinguish lithium battery fires. Michael Brooks is the executive director of the Center for Auto Safety. He says the solution will require federal funding. With this massive rollout and push from the government for electric vehicles, we should have, but we haven't had a corresponding push for what happens when things go wrong. And that's a conversation we really need to have and we need to have it quick. A 2020 report by the NTSB highlighted the risk for electric shock and uncontrolled increases in temperature and pressure, which is known as thermal runaway. The report was also critical of manufacturers saying the instructions in most manufacturers' emergency response guides for fighting high-voltage lithium-ion battery fires lack necessary vehicle-specific details on suppressing the fires. The Alliance for Automotive Innovation, which represents manufacturers, said safety is a top priority for our members, which is why they've been engaged in longstanding efforts to address fire risks for both conventionally fueled vehicles and EVs, including working with consumers, the first responder community and other stakeholders at the local, national and international levels. It's going to be a very, very different response for someone in a rural setting where they can just let that car burn because ultimately that's the best way to get rid of the problem because it consumes all the fuel. If you're downtown in, in Phoenix, that's not really going to work out for you to just let the car burn or if you're in a parking garage like that. Look 50 years into the future for me. What does EV firefighting look like? Well, I think this is going to be about a 10 to 15 year problem. Battery technology is evolving really quickly. Um, I think within 10 years you'll have solid state batteries, which can't catch on fire because of the chemistry. So way in the future, problem solved. Right now, it's that's, a conundrum. That's right, it is. And, and it's uh, technology's kind of just forced this upon us faster than everyone's ready for. According to research by Auto Insurance EZ, EVs have a 0.03% chance of catching on fire compared to gas-powered vehicles, which have a 1.5% chance of catching on fire. In Phoenix, I'm Susan Campbell. The U.S. Fire Administration suggests several steps you should take to help prevent an EV fire at your home. First, have a qualified electrician install a new dedicated circuit for your EV charging device. Older home wiring may not be suitable for use with EV supply equipment. Next, make sure you purchase a charging device that is certified by a nationally recognized testing laboratory and install a residual current device with the charging unit. It will turn off the power if there's a problem and help prevent a fire. Lithium ion battery fires aren't just limited to electric vehicles. Our recent investigation found these batteries have been linked to fires in landfills, recycling and waste management facilities, transfer stations, and even garbage trucks. You can watch reporter Heather Graff's in-depth investigation on our website, investigatetv.com. Just search lithium ion batteries. A war hero inspired by the love of his family. Holy moly. Inspires others to give back. Still to come, we revisit Sergeant Ryan Davis as he's provided with a new opportunity to serve his family. But first, surgery for an ACL tear can be a long and painful recovery, but treatments are evolving. We show you a new procedure helping young athletes and weekend warriors return to the game sooner. The American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons says it's one of the most common knee injuries. Each year, as many as 200,000 people will suffer an anterior cruciate ligament or ACL tear. The ACL is one of the strong bands that helps connect your thigh bone to your shin bone. Many people feel a popping sensation in the knee when an ACL injury occurs. The pop is followed by severe pain, rapid swelling, loss of range of motion, and feeling of instability. We examine the treatment of ACL tears, who's most at risk, and what you can do to prevent them. From the pro football field, to the college basketball court, and even the weekend warrior playing pickleball. It's just the evolution of society and who participates and the competitiveness has led to really an epidemic of ACL injury. 
Knoxville, Tennessee orthopedic surgeon Gregory Mathian has seen his fair share of torn ACLs during his 30-year career. 30, 40 years ago, you sprained your knee, you're going to be okay, rub some dirt on it, it'll be fine. And now people really understand better, I think, the magnitude and severity and the consequences of ACL injury. Dr. Mathian says an ACL tear can commonly happen in sports when speeding up, slowing down, or a change of direction. The primary purpose of your anterior cruciate ligament is to prevent your tibia or your shin bone from sliding out from beneath your femur bone, so it's to prevent this type of motion. A tear of this ligament, you have abnormal motion, which leads to in clinical instability of the knee. A number of factors can increase your risk for a tear, including poor conditioning, wearing footwear that doesn't fit properly, or playing on artificial turf. For more than 50 years, the Keck School of Medicine of USC says surgical reconstruction using ligaments in other parts of the body, or a donor graft, has been the gold standard of care for ACL injuries. Reconstruction has a 95% success rate, but ACL repair is also evolving. At Mercy Hospital in St. Louis, orthopedic surgeon Dr. David Irvine is using a new procedure called Bridge Enhanced ACL Repair, or BEAR. He told me that it was a new surgery and that um, it would make me sh like stronger uh, after. Bear allows the torn ACL to heal itself and does not require graft tissue. Dr. Irvine says this surgery reduces pain and recovery times compared to traditional ACL surgery. Early studies look very comparable to a reconstruction. So if we can repair a ligament versus harvesting tissue from somewhere to make a new one, I think hopefully patients be better off. Alex Silius was one of the first patients to undergo the bear procedure after tearing his ACL on the soccer field. Concerned, and then I did some research on it and I decided to go for it and see what happens. Following his surgery, Alex says he's doing great and confident he'll reach his goal of returning to the soccer field. I'm like four weeks ahead. I got my crutches off early. I'm doing a lot of exercises that are ahead and I can start doing my normal life again. The doctor we spoke to says it takes about two months for the body to absorb the bare implant, and a patient can return to a high level of activity such as running at full speed in about nine months. He goes on to say patients generally recover their muscle strength sooner with the bare implant. To prevent an ACL injury, doctors at the Mayo Clinic suggest getting into the habit of warming up before exercise. Avoid exercise when you're overly fatigued because it's hard to keep good form when you're tired. Strengthening your hamstrings and quadriceps and strengthening your core. Whoa! Up next, a home for a hero. It's really hard to put a word on an overwhelming positive experience. We check back in with Sergeant Ryan Davis as his family prepares for a new chapter in their lives. Guys, I don't know how many limbs you gotta lose to get rid of date night, but it's, <laughs> it's not, not three, so good luck. <laughs> That's Staff Sergeant Ryan Davis. Ryan nearly lost his life in 2019 during an attack in Afghanistan. He was severely injured and lost limbs in that battle, but fought to recover with the love and support of his wife and son. This wounded warrior has used his sense of humor, resiliency, and inspiring message to live life to the fullest. Now he's had another big change in his life, but this one is pretty cool. The Gary Sinise Foundation built Ryan and his family an accessible smart home completely mortgage free. Reporter Sam Bowman was there as Ryan and his family received the keys to their new home. Oh my gosh. Wow. Stepping inside their new home for the first time, words were hard to come by. It's really hard to put a word on an overwhelming positive experience. But if he could, it would likely sound something like this. Wow. Whoa. Holy moly. Whoa, looky here. This place. What this place is, is the Davis family's new house. It's a house, yes, but it's more than that. This is beautiful. Because this house was made specifically for them. Being able to get up underneath the sink and the stovetop is 
This is gonna change the game right here, this whole piece. Every single detail of this home. Oh, that's pretty handy. Built with intentionality. Every house that we build, we want to make it a home for everybody. From the height of the counters. Back to cooking without getting it everywhere. To the width of the halls. Look how wide the hallways are. We're not going to have any trouble in here, are we? Showering. Mountaintop. And bedtime. Well, Knox, I haven't been able to get this close to your bed in a while, huh? So cool. It's While there's certainly plenty to love about their new home. Knox, you want to see something cool? Watch this. For Ryan, the greatest feature it provides is the opportunity to do again for his family what he did so bravely for his country, serve. To be in a place that provides equal balance in a house, this new home will provide me that area to really fill in this family. And that's really the most accessible thing you can give anybody. It's the opportunity to be their best for their own family. That has really been kind of the resiliency of our story. Making it through together and being here today happy somehow. <laughs> Through God and the community and Gary. Those are the things that are stronger than any prosthetic you could get. <laughs> this gives Staff Sergeant Davis an opportunity to get some of his independence back and enjoy life with his family. I love that line about him wanting to serve and, and do things around the house and that house is beautiful and yes. gives him the ability to do that. Very nice story. Yes. All right, if you'd like to watch the original story, go to investigatetv.com and search Fight for Joy. And that's it for us on Investigate TV Plus. I'm T. Chappelle. And I'm Lee Zurich. Thanks for watching. On the next Investigate TV Plus, federal drug agents stop and search innocent people in airports before taking their cash. It's not a consensual interview in those circumstances. It's an ambush. We go in depth with a lawyer fighting the practice and working to get passengers' money back.